Welcome. So this will be the video for Maya 9 uh, covering the basic um, functions for how you would do animation in Maya. Things like setting keyframes, how to do things like messing with the keyframes, adding in-betweens, and just general stuff like how do you change your frame rate? How do you um, turn on the auto keyframe stuff? How do you add a motion trail so you can see where your um, rig is tracking? So um, it's just a little bits of odds and ends all stuck together. So the very first thing that we need to talk about is a keyframe. So a keyframe is quite simply just you saying at this point in time, this will have these values. So it's like if you're selecting in our case, the ball rig, you're saying at this point in time, the translate X, Y, and Z will be this and the rotate X, Y, and Z will be this. That's all you're saying with a keyframe. On the character rig, you're saying the elbow will be bent this amount at this time. The wrist will be bent this amount or rotated this amount at this point. So a keyframe is just your decision. This thing will be these values at a specific time. To set a keyframe, you just press the S key and that will set a keyframe at your current time in the time slider. So you can see my example there. The red lines are where your keyframes are set in the timeline. Now, if I click on this and go file, and I'm gonna set my project to my 3D ball rig folder. When I go to file open scene, if I do it right, 3D ball start is there, and I'm gonna start it. So we got the ball rig, we got the background, our reference image. So I'm gonna move into my side view and look at my reference. So right now my ball has been moved into this particular location, but that is where it is persistently located. So if I want this to be a keyframe, what we do is we make sure we're on the correct time. So I'm on frame one. Make sure you're on the correct control. So select the ball rig, set it to the, move it to the right location, which I've already done that. And then you press S. So it's all three of those things. So just, just for sake of doing it on frame 24, I'm going to, again, select my frame, make sure I'm selected on my rig, move it to my new location. Again, I'm just doing something random right now. And then if I want that to be there at frame 24, I hit S to set my keyframe. So S is what locks in the movement that you make, right? So if we go back to the notes, if you want to make it so that Maya automatically keyframes, keyframes the things that you do, you're gonna wanna turn on auto keyframe, which is in the bottom right corner of Maya, it looks like this little plus sign with the like swirl of arrows around it. It's down here. When it's turned on, it is red. So if I were to go and change the, the Y axis of this a little bit, it will keyframe automatically the change that I made. Because if I have this off and I were to say, move this up here and I don't set my keyframe, if I go back over here and back to 24, it didn't remember that I moved the ball that other time because I didn't set my keyframe. So again, even though I've already set a keyframe on this, on this frame, if I move it and don't set my keyframe again, it's gonna pretend I didn't do anything because I didn't make it save that position as a keyframe. Okay, so keyframes are deliberate choices on your part to put something in time at that time. Now, auto keyframe may help you, maybe it doesn't. Auto keyframe is not a substitute for setting your keyframes. That's what I will say. So auto keyframe can help you out, but it's not the only part of the equation. Okay, so before we get too ahead of ourselves in setting keyframes. We need to talk about how many frames we are working with and how we are playing those frames back. So how many frames we will display per second of animation is our FPS, FPS selector, which is just a little menu. 24 frames a second 
just means 24 pictures per second of animation. 24 FPS is totally good. I believe that is the default. Leave it at 24. The one thing you will need to mess with though, animation settings. There is, it is typically set to play every frame. This is one of those things you just need to change at the beginning and then it's set forever. So if you go under your animation settings, it's the little cog wheels over the guy's shoulder when he's running. So it's down here, very bottom right of Maya. You click this, it's your time slider preferences. There's an option here for playback speed. Make sure it's set to one X. So you want not play every frame, which is the default. You want your frame rate times one. So FPS times one, in our case, 24 times one and hit save. Again, that's just one of those things you set once and then it's set for good. So just make sure you do that before you start getting ahead of yourself doing your animation. Okay, so we've learned how to set keyframes. We've learned how to set our settings for our animation. How do we play it back? So under the playback section, there's play, pause, you pause just by 4,800 frames a second for super slow-mo stuff, like slow-mo explosions. Because you would, you would, could animate the, the explosion to happen within like 1.5 seconds and then slow that footage down to, you know, like 60 frames a second and then play it back hella slow. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so... First things first, playback. The things you need to know about the playhead stuff is just the orange buttons are useful because they go between your your frames. They just go between your keyframes. So you can click through your animation really fast by tapping these buttons and skipping ahead a couple of keyframes at a time if you're just trying to move through your animation fast. We're gonna come back to the motion trail once I have something to show. Now, I have a lot of FAQs here at the bottom for setting your keyframes. Now, the top one there, order of steps for setting a keyframe, you just need to get this through your brain noodle, okay? So con you're considering three things. Every time you're pressing S, you're considering three things. Am I on the right frame? Am I on the right controller? Have I moved it to the right place? Then and only then do you press S. Okay, so all three of those things. I know I'm sounding like a broken record, but that is the easiest way to screw up is to not be considerate of your process. Learn the process. Time controller position. Now, how do you copy and paste frames? How do you copy and paste keyframes? Now, this is something that you probably will not need to do on this assignment per se, but whew, Let's show you anyway. So typically, typically you would think that I could, I could just command C, command V and paste my keyframes. That just pastes my ball. That does not actually help me. So instead, what you have to do is you select the frame you want, right click and do copy here. And then if I go here, I can right click and paste, paste, and it will paste that keyframe there. So you have to do it all with right clicking in the time slider, copy, time slider, paste, right? So same concept, how do you delete a keyframe? Don't hit the delete key, you will delete your model. So instead, you just need to right click on this keyframe and do delete. And now there's no keyframe there. How do you move a keyframe or range of keyframes? So maybe you're off by a little bit. Maybe you need to move things around. So let me go ahead and set a keyframe here and I'm gonna move this ball to here. There we go. So I'll set my keyframe there. And I'm gonna set a keyframe here. Okay. So if I hold shift and drag in my timeline, see how it's selecting a range of 
of time there. I can move this around by grabbing the arrows that are in the middle and that will move where my key keyframes are in time. So I can move them through time forward and back. The less time something has, and the more motion it does in a short time, the faster it will appear. The more frames you put into a motion, the slower it's taking to transition from one position to another, the slower it's going to appear. So keep that in mind. More frames means it's going to go slower. Less frames means it's going to appear faster. So typically, you might need to move frames around. You may also want to add in-betweens or remove in-betweens. So if you want to add just single faces, or excuse me, single um, frames, just instead of this being 11 to 16, you want this to move out to 18. So I can shift click on that and move it over. That's cool. Or I could right click in the gap here, go to keys, and add an in-between and it will put an empty frame between this one and the other frame. So again, right click, add in-between. And so once you've done that, you can just tap G over and over and it will keep adding in-betweens. And the same concept, I could right click in my timeline, go to keys, remove an in-between and then just tap G a couple times and it will keep removing in-betweens to retime my stuff. You hold shift and you and you either click on that or you shift and drag on it. So either shift click on one or you shift and drag. Okay, so this is my final one, which is just funny because I get to meme about it, but we can also scale time. We can scale time on the timeline. So you can now scale four dimensionally. So your object has three dimensions of scale and then if you look at our time slider, so I've selected the range of uh, frames from 11 to 17. If I grab the outermost arrows on the selected range, I can scale the, the frame range in proportion. So now my, my frames, it ends at like 12.3 or something like that. So you can scale your time down. So where you had something framed out before on 17, I could say, well, I want that same thing to happen, but just slightly, take slightly longer, right? And it'll scale it in proportion over time. You might, you probably won't use that one that much, but I think it's cool. That's why I like to talk about scaling time. So you just compress and expand time so you get to be Doctor Strange okay so that all being said we have our ball I'm gonna go ahead and reopen my scene just just in case so I'm gonna reopen my ball come into my side view so our main concerns on this first pass because we're gonna do this in passes is simply to use what we just learned about setting keyframes to count where at a certain point in time our ball should be, move the ball to that location and set a keyframe. Now these are timed out on twos, which are to say that there's two frames between each of, or there's a frame in between each of these drawings. So each drawing you can basically times it by two and that will tell you what frame number it needs to be on or at least for starters. When you when we get further down the line, you'll see it's like slightly off and then you'll have to start messing with it a little bit. But it'll get us in a good spot for starters. Also, there's linear acceleration on this, so it will not work that well. So for starters, like I said, we have the right time, so frame one, we have the right rig selected, the ball rig, the location is already established because I left it there. And then, so I'm gonna hit set, with S, all right. Now, we don't want to set a keyframe every two frames to just get it to follow, to align to this. That's not the point of animating it with the reference. The reference is really just training wheels for us to set a couple keyframes right and let Maya do the in-betweening in between those keyframes. So 
If I count this, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then I'm going to put my pose actually down here on the ground. So I have 11 uh, poses in between there times two, 22 frames. So I'm going to go to frame um, 24. So I'm basically going to account that this was on frame two and then add 22 frames to it. So 24. And on frame 24, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to line it up. So I'm just zooming in here. I'm going to line it up with the bottom of this bounce here because this one is touching the ground. And then I'm going to bring it back here and line it up in the middle of these two dots here. So on frame 24, I've lined up my ball to be at the bottom of where it's bouncing off the ground. S to set my keyframe. And now I have my keyframe set. So right now, if I look at my ball, from frame one to 24, it goes in a straight line to the ground. So now I'm gonna go one, two, three, four poses forward. So I'm gonna go to frame eight. And on frame eight, my ball should be forward four frames from there. Sorry, so it should be here. Set my keyframe. And then I'll go forward another, so one pose, two, three, four, so another eight frames to 16. Set my keyframe. Okay, so that's one part of our bounce. Now again, we are handling this in passes. So rotation, coming later. Squishing, coming later. Right now, we're just getting, does it go up and down and left and right appropriately? Okay, so right now I only have 24 frames in my range. So I'm gonna slide this over. And I'm also going to change here where it says my, on the right, my maximum is 48. I'm gonna just put in 200. Just give me some breathing room. All right, so I'm on frame 24. I can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus the pose I'm at at the bottom, so nine. So I'm gonna go forward um, 18 frames, so 42. Bring this up here, bring this over to here. Set my keyframe, <clears throat> and then I'm gonna go forward one, two, three, four poses from here. So 32. Yes. Yeah, and then one, two, three, four. Yeah, yeah, okay. Set my keyframe. So now I have one at the bottom, one here in the middle, one at the top. Come over onto this side of the, the um, bounce. One, two, oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So another 18 frames down. So that brings me to 60. Whoops. And then frame 60. We'll have this touch the ground down here. Set my keyframe. Let's go back to here. One, two, three, four poses forward. So eight frames will be on frame 50. One, two, three, four. Set my keyframe. All right, I'm gonna do one more bounce and then I'll show you what it looks like so far. So again, it is gonna be kind of rough at the start. We'll, we'll get it smoothed out as we get things done. Okay, so frame 60, I'm gonna count forward. One, two, three, four, five, six poses. So that's gonna be 12 frames, so 72. And 
and bring it into position here. Set my keyframe. So I'll come back here, one, two, three, four frames. So I'm gonna go forward eight, or excuse me, eight frames. Should be on that fourth pose there. Set my keyframe. And then I'll move forward in time again. So from frame 72, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven poses. So I got 14. So 86. Set my keyframe. And then I'm gonna go back here, go forward eight frame or four poses, one, two, three, four poses, so eight frames, frame eighty. This should be here and here. Set my keyframe. Alright, so I'm gonna grab the end of my range um, slider here, extend my range all the way back to frame one. So now I'm looking at frames one to ninety-five. And I'm going to hit my playhead back to the very beginning. My ball goes up there. And we're going to play it. So that's the start of it. Again, the timing will get a little sharper as we continue to work on this. But for right now, just the general getting it to hit the the right poses at the right time will get you most of the way there so going forward back to where I was I'm on frame 86 here so I'm again just counting my poses one two three four to the top so that's gonna be eight frames and that'll be 94 whoops Set my keyframe. So then basically I'm gonna go forward four frames from that. So I'll go to frame 90. On frame 90, my ball should be here. Set my keyframe. So I'll go here. One, two, three, four, five poses. So that's 10 frames, so I'll be on 104. Set my pose there. Go back here. So six frames forward, so frame 100, my ball should be here. Let's go back here. One, two, three poses, so that's gonna be six forward. 110, move my ball into place. Set my keyframe. And then essentially what I'll do is I'll just go to this one here, one pose back, set this one, and then on this one, I'm gonna go forward two poses. This one should be here. One, two, three, four. So this will be at 118. And then at 118, this will be on the ground. One, two, three, so this will be on 124. So I'm setting basically one at the top and one at the bottom and then one frame that's sort of in between the top and the bottom to help give me the, the shape of the arc. So then this is at the top, one, two, three.
And then for these last ones, you can essentially Ranges from 1 to 158. So now we can do this. And so that's where you should get to. Well, I'm going to um, refine it more um, as I do the next lesson. So that's what I will say about that. Once you get these translates set at the right times, you'll you just set your keyframes get them all in the right spot we'll talk more about manicuring the timing on the next one when we're talking about the graph editor so i'm going to go ahead and stop the recording again set all of your translate keyframes up down left right on the ball rig using counting again every one of these circles is every other frame so basically these circles you can count them and times by two, and that will tell you how many frames forward you need to be. So again, counting, counting your frames times these by two. Okay. Thanks for watching. Oops. That's not what I actually meant to.